If you've got a 401k, an IRA, or a pension plan, I've got some really bad news for you. The IRS wants you to think that these so-called qualified plans are the best way to save money for retirement. They induce you to max out your plans by giving you tax breaks right now and allowing your money to grow tax-free over the years. Sounds pretty good, right? Wrong. The fact is that putting money in your 401k or IRA is almost the worst thing you could do for your retirement because you're going to be taxed out of your gourd when you finally retire and need the money the most. Then, when you die, guess what? The IRS will hit you with a double whammy. They'll tax your estate when you die, then they'll tax whatever is left again when it is inherited by your heirs. And on top of the tax problems, you'll also have to deal with market volatility that can kill your portfolio. Just think about 2001 and 2008. What if there were a way to avoid tax burdens at retirement, avoid portfolio killing down years in the market, and virtually eliminate any worries you may have about outliving your money during retirement? On this video, I want to show you an IRS-approved class of tax-friendly retirement savings vehicles that beats the pants off your IRA, 401k, or pension plan. They've been around for years, are offered by the oldest, largest, and most financially stable institutions in the world, and allow your money to grow tax-free, just like your current qualified plan, but has zero taxes when the money is dispersed at retirement. Think about that for a minute. Zero taxes on your estate when you die, and zero taxes when the money is transferred to your heirs at death. Listen to that one more time. Zero taxes as your money grows, zero taxes when the money is distributed, and zero on your estate when you die, and zero taxes on the money inherited by your family. Zero. And here's the best part. Unlike your qualified plan, there is no risk that you will lose principal on the investment during a down market. If the market tanks like it did in 2008, your worst case scenario is no gain but no loss either. What I'm talking about is a retirement savings vehicle that will help make sure you don't outlive your money during retirement. Are you intrigued? Well, you should be. I want to take a few minutes right now to share with you an important message about the best retirement savings vehicle you've never heard of. Let's start by talking about the IRS. They desperately want you to think that an IRA is the best way to grow your money for retirement. You know what? It's not even close. I'm talking about what the IRS calls qualified plans. IRAs, 401ks, pension plans, and so forth. Compared to traditional brokerage accounts where you'd normally buy stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, these qualified plans have some really good tax advantages. First, you can invest in a qualified plan with before tax dollars. Number two, you don't have to pay taxes on these gains every year like you do on regular stocks and mutual funds, so your money grows tax deferred. It's not taxed until you take the money out when you finally retire. That means you have more money working for you during those years leading up to retirement. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, yeah. Compared to a regular brokerage account, sure. But that's like saying a bicycle is the best mode of transportation going. Of course, a bike beats the heck out of walking, especially if you're trying to travel outside of your immediate neighborhood. But what if you're trying to travel across town or clear across the country? You might want to try a car. And what if you're trying to get overseas? Walking's out of the question. And that bicycle is pretty much worthless. You'd be much better off in a jet plane. So, just to make sure you're following my analogy, a regular brokerage account is like walking, lots of tax problems. A qualified plan is like a bicycle or maybe even a beat up old car. Better than walking, but not super helpful on extra long trips like, say, retirement? What I'm going to show you on this video is like having your very own top of the line private jet fully fueled and ready to go with your own personal pilot. Yeah, it's that much better. The key to really maximizing your retirement savings is to understand the difference between tax deferred and tax free. Under the IRS qualified plans that you probably have right now, your money is growing tax deferred, which inherently means that it will be taxed at some point in the future. Guess when that point is? That's right, when you retire and need the money the most. You probably won't be working, tax rates will probably even be higher than they are now, and you won't have any IRS friendly deductions for kids or mortgage interest if your house is paid off, which means that you'll be paying a huge percentage of what you take out to the IRS in taxes, which, of course, reduces the amount that you have to spend for living expenses and lifestyle. Here's another way to look at it. Uncle Sam is counting on you to pay more than your fair share of taxes when you retire. Think of how brilliant that is. Let's encourage people to contribute money by giving them a tax break now, then let that money grow tax deferred so we can get an even bigger chunk of taxes from them later. Hey, I'm all for paying my fair share of taxes, but I tell you what, 
giving the IRS a bare minimum of $33,000 for every $100,000 I withdraw from my qualified plan of retirement? Just plain ridiculous. Look, you've paid taxes and you'll continue to pay taxes for your entire working career. Let's keep the government's hands out of our wallets at retirement, okay? For the record, that $33,000 out of every $100,000 you withdraw isn't a worst case scenario either. You realize that, don't you? With the probability that tax rates will rise, it's probably actually a best case scenario. Any right thinking person can see that the tax rate of 40 or 50 percent isn't out of the question 15 or 20 years down the road. So let's talk about this so-called jet plane of retirement savings vehicles. You know, the one that beats the pants off a regular brokerage account or qualified plan. Before I tell you exactly what it is, let me show you some of the major advantages it holds. First, tax-free accumulation. Just like a qualified plan and way better than a brokerage account, your money grows year after year without having to pay taxes on the annual gains. Compound interest can then work its magic, which allows your money to grow bigger and faster. We don't need to have a discussion about compound interest, do we? If you're not familiar, just go to Google and type the greatest miracle of growing money ever known to mankind and find out about the greatness of compound interest. Second, tax-free distribution. Here's where your current qualified plan starts to look really bad. When you hop on board the jet plane of retirement savings vehicles, your money not only grows tax-free, but you can also actually distribute the money at retirement tax-free. That means that on the same $100,000 distribution I just talked about, you keep all of it, regardless of the then current tax rate. 30% tax rate? You won't care. You'll pay no taxes. 40 or 50% tax rate? Let everyone else worry about that. Your retirement savings can be used tax-free. $100,000 means $100,000 to spend, not $67,000 or less. Which do you prefer? Third, tax-free transfer. With a qualified plan or with a regular brokerage account, your money will likely be taxed twice when you pass away. Once on the amount left in the account when you die, and then again when your heirs receive the leftovers as income. Great for the IRS, horrible for your estate. The jet plane of retirement savings vehicle lands smoothly here, too. No death taxes, no inheritance taxes. If you've got a million bucks in your account when you die, your heirs get the full million. Uncle Sam? Nothing. Transferred tax laws are, however, fairly complicated, and there's some exceptions and some limitations. So ask the qualified advisor who gave you this video to discuss your situation with you. Fourth, no risk of loss of principal. Remember when the stock market lost over half its value in less than 18 months starting in October 2007? Of course you do because your portfolio probably lost half its value or more during that same time too. Did you start having nightmares about being 82 years old and still working part-time at Walmart just to keep food on the table? Your qualified plan has no way to protect you from that kind of market volatility and downside losses. Ouch! Not true with the jet plane of retirement savings vehicles. The principal in the account never loses altitude. When structured properly, there's no chance it will lose any principal. Not a dime. Not a penny. Nothing. If you'd been on board with this in October 2007, your portfolio would probably look a whole lot prettier right now. I'll explain why and how in just a minute. Fifth, dramatically reduce the chance of outliving your money during retirement. Survey after survey show that baby boomers' number one fear about retirement is outliving their money. And hey, you know what? That's a perfectly reasonable fear if you ask me. If you have a million dollars saved and you retire at age 65, that's pretty good if you only plan on living until you're, say, 70 or 75 and if you don't have any significant medical issues. But how do you stretch a million dollars or whatever amount you end up having saved by the time you retire for 15 or 20 or 30 years, especially given the increase in cost of living and the likelihood of needing specialized care if you do end up living into your late 80s or 90s? Not to worry if you ride the jet plane of retirement savings vehicles. When structured and funded properly, it'll keep on paying and paying and paying all through your 70s, 80s, 90s, and even beyond that if you're lucky enough to hit 100. Hey, you're more likely to hit 100. Okay, okay. There are even more advantages, and I'll cover them in just a minute. But first, let me address that question that I know is nagging you in the back of your mind. You're saying to yourself right now, okay, this all sounds great. Everything you've said so far makes a lot of sense, and I'm interested. But hey, pal, what's the catch? We all know that anything that sounds too good to be true probably isn't. Hey, I hear you. Between Enron, Bernie Madoff, and the great stock market meltdowns of the 2000s, a healthy dose of cynicism, skepticism, or both is not only understandable, it's just plain smart. 
I'll tell you what the catch is, and trust me, it's more like six seconds of turbulence on your six-hour flight to Hawaii on your personal jet plane than a catch. But first, a quick reality check. Just because you've never heard of this before doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, doesn't mean that hundreds of thousands of people aren't already using it, and doesn't mean that all of the advantages that I've talked about aren't absolutely real and sitting there just waiting for you. So, here's the six seconds of turbulence catch. Per IRS rules, you have to fund the plan I'm telling you about with after-tax dollars. In other words, you can't deduct the amount you contribute off your current year's taxes like you can with a qualified plan. That means that if you were to contribute $6,000 this year in an IRA versus this retirement savings vehicle, you'd in reality pay an extra $2,000 in taxes this year, assuming a 33% tax bracket. If you're in a lower tax bracket, naturally, your tax savings would be less. That sounds like a drawback, right? Well, actually, no. To understand why funding with after-tax dollars instead of before-tax dollars like you would with a qualified plan is not a drawback, you just need to understand the alternatives. Answer this philosophical question. If you were a farmer, would you rather pay taxes on the small sack of seeds when you purchase them in the spring, or would you rather pay taxes on your entire harvest when you sell it in the fall? Well, do the math. If a farmer bought a thousand dollars worth of seeds and was taxed at eight percent, he'd pay eighty bucks. But if the farmer planted those seeds and paid the same eight percent of taxes on a fifty thousand dollar harvest, he'd pay four thousand dollars in taxes. Eighty versus four thousand. That's a fifty times increase in taxes paid. The same rationale applies to your retirement savings. In fact, the amount of money you save on upfront taxes with a qualified plan, remember, you'd save $2,000 in taxes by making a $6,000 contribution into a qualified plan, okay, will almost certainly be dwarfed by the taxes you pay at retirement to the tune of about 10 times at least. Here's why. If your $6,000 grows to $100,000 over the course of the next 30 years, remember the magic of compound interest. This is very reasonable. You'll pay at least $33,000 in taxes on the harvest. We already talked about this earlier. That's $33,000 straight to the IRS right when you'll be needing it the most. Would you rather pay $2,000 in taxes right now or $33,000 at least in taxes later? It's as simple as seeds and harvest. I've said it once and I'll say it again. No wonder Uncle Sam loves qualified plans so much. It's his way of protecting his financial future. Okay, okay. So let me go ahead and draw back the curtain and show you what the Jet Plane of Retirement Savings Vehicle is. Just do me a favor and hear me out because I'm going to admit it right now, right up front, it might sound a little, well, boring right at first. That's because it's a life insurance product called Index Universal Life Contract, or IUL for short. Stick with me, Skipper. Don't be fooled by any stereotypes of what you may think an IUL is. This is different than any kind of whole life or variable life or universal life plan that you may have heard about or purchased in the past. The fact is, IUL is a lot more about savings than it is about life insurance, although it does do a nice job of providing that, too. Hopefully the tax advantages and principal protection advantages I've told you about are clear enough and big enough to keep you interested. But you also need to know that the IUL, when structured and funded properly, beats the pants off of any other kind of retirement savings plan in every comparison category that matters, including growth potential, risk avoidance, liquidity of funds, flexibility of contributions, flexibility of distributions, longevity of distributions, and fees. Everything. Listen, insurance companies, by law and by track record, are extraordinarily conservative. Yeah, I know that AIG tanked it, and you might be thinking that all insurance companies are going bust. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Life insurance companies that offer IULs, as a rule, have massive, massive cash reserves. One company, as an example, had operating revenues in 2008, the worst year of the recession, of $14 billion dollars earnings of $1.3 billion and cash reserves at the end of the year of $12.8 billion. There's a reason people think of life insurance companies as old, stodgy, conservative curmudgeons, because they are. Their stodgy curmudgeonness is also part of the reason you've never heard of an IUL before. Life insurance companies thrive with things like risk management, actuarial tables, and other boring life insurance stuff. But they don't know jack when it comes to communications. Go online right now and read their brochures. It's like reading hieroglyphics. 
boring, painful, obtuse, hard to understand, and that's just the table of contents. But that doesn't mean that this product, Index Universal Life, is anything less than magnificent for creating wealth. The IUL, Index Universal Life, gets its name because it's indexed to the S&P 500, which simply means that it mirrors the growth of the S&P 500, which, for your information, has returned over 9% per year on average for the last 27 years, even with all the crummy years in the 1980s, right after 9-11, and 2007 and 8. Remember that? But here's the best part and what makes an IUL so darn attractive as a retirement savings vehicle. The reason IUL accounts when structured properly won't lose principal is because the lowest return guaranteed by the contract is 0%. Or in technical speak, they have a floor return of 0%. They can't lose money. If the stock market tanks for the year, your IUL contract doesn't take a big hit. It just stays even right where it is. Stated differently, an IUL locks in the gains during up years, but it doesn't participate in the down years. Take that IRA. You can't even come close to competing with that. Everyone knows that portfolio losses are killers because you have to double up just to get back to even. You eliminate that risk with the IUL since your floor is 0% annual growth. No loss of principal. Compare that to the devastating 37.2% loss of the S&P 500 in 2008. If you were indexing your IRA against the S&P 500 and therefore did not have the 0% floor like you would with an IUL contract, if you had a $1 million portfolio on January 1st of 2008, you would have ended the year with just $628,000. Ouch! Even with the big bounce back year of 2009, where the S&P returned 23.6%, the $628,000 you had left after getting killed in 2008 would have only grown to about $775,000, still deep in the hole, not with an IUL. Now that brings us to the other catch of the IUL. It does offer the peace of mind of the principal protecting 0% floor, but it does also cap the gains on the upside. That means when the market has a huge growth year, your investment will be capped at somewhere in the 12 to 15% range, depending on the carrier and the contract. Don't bail out on me now. Trust me, this is not a big issue. In fact, quite the opposite. We're talking about six more seconds of turbulence on your six-hour smooth plane ride to Hawaii. Here's why. Realize that huge gain years almost always follow what? That's right, huge loss years. 2003, for instance, was great. 26.3% gain in the S&P 500. But it followed three consecutive years, 2000, 2001, and 2002, of negative returns. 12.2, 13.4, and 24.1% respectively. Negative all three years. Let's run those numbers. If you had a million dollars in your IRA on January 1st, 2000, it would have fallen to approximately 878000 at the end of the first year, then continued to fall to just over 760000 at the end of 2001, and then plummeted to a measly 577000 at the end of 2002. That same million dollars in a loss-protected IUL would have retained its worth at a million dollars at the end of 2000, even though the market was down, remember? Still been worth a million dollars at the end of 2001, and guess what? Still worth a million dollars after 2002, even though the market got slaughtered. That's three consecutive down years and $423,000 in avoided losses. Wow. Then, in 2003, let's say that you were with an IUL carrier that had a 13% cap. Remember the big downside catch? It has a cap. Your million dollars would have grown to $1.13 million. It grew. Meanwhile, the qualified plan portfolio that tanked from a million dollars down to just $577,000, remember that one? It would have gotten the full benefit of the 26.3% market gain, not a 13% cap like our IUL contract. Yay, but let me ask you this. Would you rather add 13% to a million dollars or 26% to $577,000? 26% added to $577,000 only brings the account up to about $728,000. Again, compared to $1.13 million, this is a no-brainer. At the end of the four-year cycle, you would have been ahead by over $400,000 with an IUL. This is real money in a worst-case scenario. The only way a qualified plan could possibly do better is if the S&P were to go up unfettered by over 15% per year for 5 or 10 consecutive years with zero negative years. Do you really think that's going to happen? And even in the one in a million chance that it did, 
get ready to pay the tax man when you retire. I know these numbers can start to be a bit mind-numbing, but they're so critical for you to understand so you can see how to avoid getting crushed financially when you retire. Don't be afraid to rewind the video and watch that last section or the entire video again. I want to continue with the examples just a little bit further. We stopped our examples at the end of 2003. Remember the IUL account that started with a million dollars had weathered the storm and grown to 1.13 million. The IRA account hadn't done so well and had managed to eke back to $728,000, but only after a really strong 2003. Now, let's look at what happened in 2004, 5, 6, and 7. The S&P gained, in this order, 7.2, 1.2, 12.8, and 1.2% in those four years. Your IUL account, since it's indexed to the S&P 500, and since all of the gains were between the 0% floor, remember that, and the 13% cap, your IUL would have taken all of those same gains, 7.2, 1.2, 12.8, and 1.2%. That would take your $1.13 million account right to around $1.4 million by the end of 2007. Pretty good, right? Then, when the S&P got shellacked to the tune of 37% loss in 2008, since the lowest return your IUL account can get is 0%, guess what? The IUL account would have held steady at $1.4 million. No loss. Nice, isn't it? On the other hand, the IRA account would have grown from $728,000 to about $900,000 during those four good years, still down by hundred grand since 2000, just in time to get crushed clear back down to $565,000 at the end of 2008. What would you rather have going into 2009? $565,000 or $1.4 million? This isn't a retirement savings vehicle for the ultra conservative. It's a retirement savings vehicle for the ultra intelligent. If you think market caps of 12 to 15% are a poor trade off for a contractual guarantee of a 0% floor, you're just plain crazy. Naturally, past performance isn't an indicator of what will happen in the future, but I think it's safe to say that the market is going to have up years and down years. Protecting yourself from huge losses is one of the primary advantages of the IUL. It's impossible for me to overstate how superior the IUL is compared to your qualified plan. It's not even close. We've already covered the tax advantages. They're clear and evident. The risk avoidance issue is huge and it favors the IUL by a country mile. But also remember, indexed universal life is also, yeah, life insurance. Here's what that means. If you die the day after you fund an IUL policy or any time thereafter, your heirs will receive a death benefit tax-free. The amount of the benefit depends on the size and structure of your policy, but think about your qualified plan and brokerage accounts for just a minute. How much do they pay in death benefits if you were to die early? Oh yeah, none because they're not insurance. Are you starting to see what I mean by the best retirement vehicle you've never heard of? Hey, that reminds me. Let's talk a little bit more about why you've probably never heard of an IUL before. I already told you that one of the main reasons was that stodgy old insurance companies have horrific communication skills. But there's actually a bigger reason, which is financial advisors almost never talk about IUL. Why is that? Simple math. Only licensed insurance agents can legally sell you an IUL. And most licensed money managers and brokers are not licensed to sell insurance. In other words, the guy who sells you your IRA can't, by law, sell you an indexed universal life policy. And if he can't sell it, he can't make any money on it. End of story. Your financial planner's motivation is to get you signed up for an IRA or 401k and then make money on you for life as your investment grows. They don't care about your future tax burden. Why should they? Seriously, call your investment advisor on the phone right now and ask about an IUL. Chances are 99% he or she has never even heard of it. And if they have, they have zero working knowledge of how or why it works. How would they know? They don't know insurance products. They like to think they have a corner on the market of helping people save enough money to retire, but they don't. They're selling skateboards, bicycles, or roller skates and pretending like the big, shiny private jet doesn't even exist. The fact is the IUL is the best possible wealth accumulation vehicle for your retirement. For most people and in most situations, it simply cannot be beat for tax advantages, safety, growth potential, liquidity, and flexibility. All right, just one more quick topic and then we'll let your licensed insurance professional take over and discuss all the fine point details as they relate to your specific situation. And that topic is the logistics of how the IUL works. It works like a life insurance policy in the sense that you make monthly or annual contributions into your account. You will work with your advisor to determine what the optimal amount is for your situation. It'll vary depending on how many years you have left until retirement 
your financial goals for retirement, and your current financial ability. The money you contribute to an IUL, like we've discussed at length, will continue to grow tax-free. Unlike a qualified plan account, you may have access to your money at any time you want or need it without a penalty before or after you retire. That's what's called flexibility. When you do pass away, the balance of the account will be passed to your heirs tax-free, just like with any other life insurance policy. The IUL really does offer the absolute best of all possible scenarios. It's tax-friendly, it's safer than safe, and it gives you flexible access to your money. The next step is yours. You simply need to meet with a licensed insurance professional who gave you this video and discuss your particular situation. He or she will answer all of your questions, I'm sure you have several, and discuss all of your options. You may want to consider watching this video again, this time with a pen and paper handy to jot down any notes or questions you may have. Like anything else worthwhile, there are plenty of details to be covered and there's a bit of a learning curve. But whatever you do, don't do nothing. There's too much at stake. Don't fall prey to what I call the law of diminishing intent. You know what I mean. You intend to make the call and learn more, but you get overwhelmed with the thousand little urgencies of life and you look up and a few months or even a few years have passed and you haven't done anything. So take one action right now. Set an appointment to meet with the insurance professional who gave you this video. You can do so by either calling the number on the screen or by filling out the form at the website shown on the screen right now. That's it. Do that one thing right now and take a closer look at the Jet Plane of Retirement Savings Vehicle, Indexed Universal Life. You'll be glad you did.